Hi, I am Dr. Sharon. Let me invite some people to this Facebook Live. I don't know how to do it. Uh, I don't know how to do it. Uh, um, let's invite some people to this Facebook Live. Am I live? Who's here? Choose my live mode. Wave at me if you're here. This is going to be a quick hit on... Hi, Betty. How are you? Hi, Betty Burston. This is going to be quick. Let me tell you what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about seasonal allergies. Of all of the questions I've gotten in the last two weeks, let me tell you what number one. Number one, two, three, four, five, and six have been on seasonal allergies. So, um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, what's up, Clint? What's up, Kim Jones? We're going to talk about seasonal allergies, what we need to know and do. This is going to be quick. Y'all, keep me to it. If you have questions right now, please go ahead and post them. Invite some people. I don't know how to do um, the whole live, invite the party and all that stuff. If somebody knows how to do that, somebody host a little party. Anyway, so, hi, Helen White, my girl. Um, so, this is Dr. Sharon Alisonati. We are going to do a quick hit on allergies. I have gotten bombarded with allergies. I'll tell you now, I usually say I answer all my emails personally, and you're getting a cut and paste with the answers for this, right? So, I hope you watch Facebook Live. As a matter of fact, maybe I will just, um, put this has the answer to the seasonal allergy questions um, that I'm getting. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Please invite some other people on. And then as always, I always get, um, I always get, put the, uh, this on YouTube. Y'all go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. I think I got like six or seven subscribers. Most of y'all watch and we'll have a couple thousand watch Facebook, but uh, most of y'all watch on that. So if you have an allergy, you join the club. You are not by yourself. You're not. Over 50 million Americans have an allergy. Yes, they are bad this season, Stephanie. Hi, Cousin Charles. They are horrible. Y'all invite some other people, do a watch party or something. 50 million Americans. So I have at least six people on. So at least one of you have seasonal allergies. Hi, classmate Dennis. So, uh... People are allergic to pollen, food, pets, medications, and all of that. So you need to, number one, recognize if you have an allergy. Number two, and Dennis is the outdoor runner. If you have allergies, Dennis, to pollen right now, you hurting because running outside with pollen, you really can't avoid it. So hopefully you don't have a pollen allergy. Um, but you have to recognize your triggers. And I'm going to focus really on pollen allergies. The other thing that is good is if you have really bad allergies or your child has really bad allergies, it would be a good thing for you to get allergy tests. And you go into the doctor's office, they stick you with a bunch of little allergens on your back and see what you react to. Hi, sorry, Yvette. So you need to also, number one, find out what you're allergic to. Number two, remember that you can be allergic to things that are in your, you could be allergic to dust in your house. So what do you need to do? Dust. You could be allergic to dust mites. You could be allergic to anything. So, um, and whatever causes allergies, get ready for this, is called an allergen. Okay, so that's easy. So it's medications, pollen, whatever, mold, whatever. And I'm reading something off of the CDC because I just want to make sure I hit all the stuff. I've got so many questions about this. It's ridiculous. So, and I've talked about allergies before, but I got to do it again because everybody is suffering. So, uh, basically what happens is you get exposed to the allergen. So, if it is uh, you're allergic to pollen. You take it in, you, you come through your nostrils, your mouth, or you touch it. There's inflammation. Usually, uh, you'll have inflammation either the skin, the sinuses, um, and then you have itching, sneezing, wheezing, and watery eyes. That's classic. Then you can get congested, uh, and so your voice gets very deep and all this other stuff. So who's at risk? 
You're at risk for allergies, men and women. Somebody just type everybody, period. You can get an allergy at any time. So you didn't grow, hi Maggie, hi Aubrey, you didn't grow up, you didn't have an allergy before. Well, guess what? At any time, hi Bishop Foster, at any time you can develop an allergy, okay? Anytime. You also can have an allergy in childhood, which I've talked about before. If you have asthma, you have basically an allergy. Do you know that? Because al uh, asthma is an allergic reaction. So if you had asthma as a child, you are very much at increased risk for having allergies as an adult. All right? And again, you can be 50 years old, never had an allergy in your life, and all of a sudden you got an allergy. Boom. Hi, Shannon Brown. So... How do you know if you have, so I said everybody, family history, if your mama and grandma and Pop Pop and Bucci and all of them have allergies, you probably going to have allergies. Just want to say, okay. Uh, and your kids, probably a little bad chain, they probably going to have allergies too. Okay. <laughs> so, so how do you find out? So number one, make a list of your symptoms. Sometimes you kind of think, uh, Oh, I have a runny nose today. Oh, uh, tomorrow, oh, I got a little itchy. Oh, tomorrow, this. just make a list. You all have cell phones. You have a note page. Just kind of write down this is going on. And then go see a physician. Hi, Savannah. Go see a physician. Also, track the timing. That's important. When do I get these effects? So I go out in the morning, get in my car. I'm fine. Hi, Patrice. Um, get in my car and I'm fine. But when I go for a walk at lunchtime, I'm not fine. Well, that's a pretty good sign that maybe it's rain like in Maryland here and, and the pollen gets washed away. So most of us going to have a good time tomorrow because a lot of the pollen is washed away. But give about two or three days, it'll come back. So you look, track the timing and make a list of your symptoms, okay? So allergans is anything that causes an allergy. Now... Is it an allergy or is it a cold? And this is key because there's a little chart that I'm going to post. Runny, itchy, stuffy nose, sneezing, wheezing, watery, itchy eyes, itchy skin or hives. That is an allergy. Runny or stuffy nose, sneezing, and you could also have a sore throat, body aches and fever. That's a cold. Okay. And remember, you can have what's called a spring cold, a summer cold. You can have a cold anytime. When the symptoms start, allergies shortly after being exposed to the allergen. So if you have a food allergy, you eat a shrimp. In five seconds, you have wheezing and you have um, um, hives or whatever. That's important. Cold, it usually develops over several days. How long does it last? Uh, allergies can last the entire season, as long as you are repeatedly exposed to the allergen. Uh, and um, cold, you're going to get better in a few days. And then people also say something called hay fever. Guess what? Hay fever is an allergy. It is also known as, what's up? One of my best friends in the world, Rachel Villanueva, what's up? A bad GYN in New York. Y'all need a GYN. Check out Dr. Rach. Um, so allergic rhinitis or hay fever is a very common type of allergy. It's seasonal and it only really happens in the spring and the fall. Runny nose, stuffy, sneezy, watery eyes, itchy throat, and all of that, okay? Uh, now, if you really have hay fever all around the year, you're probably allergic to something inside, right? So if all year long you have allergy symptoms, whatever, don't count it up to pollen. It may be dust mites. Could be cockroaches. You can have, especially in urban cities, you could have cockroach allergy. Um, call the exterminator. Uh, pet dander. So you're walking around with your little cat or dog, always stuffy and all that. You may not have, to, you got a little issue with the dog. So what do we do? I told y'all this is going to be quick, quick, quick. Okay, what do you do? Take care when you're cleaning. If you're vacuuming and dusting, this stirs up dust. If you have a dust allergy, you're going to have a problem. So you may need to wear a little mask or pay somebody if you can afford to, or just, again, wear a little mask. Um, and if you could leave the house a few hours after you clean, because the dust is stirred up and all that. So if you wake up early and clean, that will help you with the allergies. Y'all learning something? Somebody wave at me and tell me it's interesting or something. Uh, what's up, homegirl Tammy? Um, and then if you have, uh, pet allergies, keep the animals out of your bedrooms 
and out of your bed and all of that. Vacuum your carpets frequently and replace carpet with, typically you want to use hardwood, towel, or linoleum. Now, to keep dust mites, those are the little microscopic critters that are in the carpeting and on beds and all that other stuff. Uh, hi, Warren. Um, use allergen-proof uh, mattresses, box springs, pillows, and then wash your bedding every single week uh, to avoid dust mites. Um, and then if you have mold, all of that. The basic thing with any allergen, whether it's an allergen that you eat, if it's an allergen, oh, okay, here's a question. If it's an allergen that you eat or are exposed to, is to avoid it at all costs. So I have a question. Doc developed mild asthma. Does allergy meds like monoleucast have a long-term effect? Any anything that you take that is supposed to do something for you can have a side effect. That is whether you are eating cereal in the morning and uh, it's supposed to, you know, it's a high fiber cereal, you're gonna have a side effect. The side effect is a positive thing that you're gonna go to the bathroom, right? I need you to think about that with anything you take, whether it's over the counter, whether it's natural, whether it's a prescription. Absolutely anything that you take um, can cause a side effect. So yes, allergy medications, uh, uh, asthma medications, all of those can have a side effect, but this is the issue. Sudden death from an asthma attack has a major side effect if you don't take your medication. And so you weigh the balance and you try to reduce the side effects, take it as you are supposed to. One of the big issues with asthma medications, uh, Bishop, Bishop Andrea, is that people don't use the inhaler right. So you basically are just spraying the back of your throat and it's not getting into your lung. And so when you get that inhaler, it's important, go online to reputable sites and watch them, but you're supposed to breathe in, take a puff, and then as it goes down, uh, you would have the it going down with you breathing in versus not. Hi, Earl and Nikita. So go online. I can't demonstrate it because I don't have an inhaler here. But the number one problem with asthma medications that are not oral pills it, and the inhalers is that people basically take it. I see it all the time. They shake, put it in the mouth and just spray. They ain't done no breathing, nothing. So they did a little spray to the back of their throat. That's it. All right. So. What do you do to protect yourselves from allergens? Number one, avoid the allergen. Dust mites, dust, um, pollen, try to avoid them as much as possible. Some things you cannot um, really stay away from. In the D.C. metro area, North Carolina, pollen is going to get you. But the peak usually is 10 to 4 p.m. So you have less symptoms at night. So if you get to work early, um, say 9 o'clock, and you're inside a building and all that, and then you leave at 4.30, you are avoiding some of the peak. And get the app on your phone with the allergy forecast. If, if it's a high pollen count day, you need to know, hey, I may need to take something before. And this is a key. Now, as I said, I think last week or two, in my neighborhood, I love to walk outside early in the morning. Some people walking outside with the big face mask and all that. You could do that, particularly if you do, um, if you're a landscaper and you have constant, constant exposure. Yes, okay, that you probably need to do that. But you, I, I, I'm just saying that ain't my testimony. I'm not walking around with a big mask. I'm not. I mean, but do you? It's not gonna hurt you. It will help a little bit, but you can't use the same mask all the time. So use a new mask every day because the pollen's on the outside, and then throw it out on the outside. Otherwise, you take it in. You have it, you bring the pollen inside your house, and then you sneeze and all day. Common sense works, people. All right, so the other thing about tracking pollen in is make sure that you leave your shoes outside. I mean, these are simple things. How do you make sure you don't track it into your house? Uh, change your clothes and showering and washing your hair immediately after going outside. Now, you know, we say that most people don't wash their hair every day. Uh, particularly minorities, you don't, we, we, as a black woman, I just say no way I can wash my hair every day. That's a whole ordeal. Um, but again, our, uh, Caucasian, uh, Asian, other ethnic groups that have thinner hair and can wash their hair every day. The, if you have high seasonal allergies, you need to wash your hair every day. Or you need to use, if you are African American, have thicker hair and all of that, I, I saw Rachel, Dr. V, you can wash your hair every day because you have the curly stuff. But um, 
Um, if you have that, you need to make sure that you use a protective style and you may need to do, put something over your hair when you go outside. Um, the other big thing for you with seasonal allergies is wear sunglasses. I, I love sunglasses, have a whole collection, but wear sunglasses that protects the pollen from getting your eye. Roll up the car windows. You may have a wonderful convertible, but if you have horrible, horrible, horrible allergies, guess what? High pollen count days, you cannot... Um, be comfortable with the car down, the car windows down or the roof down or whatever. And then uh, a good thing that um, the CDC says is have somebody else do your yard work because you may be re uh, just really um, miserable. Okay. So now what medications can help? Number one, let's go natural. Natural is all what I talked to you about. Ways to avoid having to take medications and do things is to avoid the pollen or whatever it is as much as possible. But we also know that there comes a time that some people just have allergies and they cannot avoid it and they really get them down and you really get sick. Um, I have a good friend right now that did not go to work because he is really sick from um, allergies. Okay, we're not telling no names. Uh <laughs> But, uh, and he needs his voice. So anyway, um, so now, try immunotherapy. Those are the allergy shots if you have really bad allergies, understanding that you can convert to a new allergy. That's something to talk to your doctor about. Now, what are the medications that will help? Steroid sprays, okay? That's usually what doctors really want you to do first. The nas nasal sprays, you can get them over the counter if that's going to help you. Um, and then if you need something a little stronger, then you have to go to your physician and get a prescription. Um, so a steroid nasal spray is usually the first choice, choice because remember I said the allergies you have, inflammation of the sinuses and all that. Ooh, my little battery low. Inflammation of the sinuses and all that. Well, a steroid is going to help decrease that, decrease the sneezing, decrease the stuffy nose, decrease the itching. Now... They have to be taken regularly and often daily, even when you're not feeling the symptoms for them to really work. That's a little tricky. Hi, Katie. What's up? Dr. Patton. Classmate, med school classmate. Um, and some of the side effects of the steroid nasal sprays and any nasal spray is really going to be you can have nosebleed because, again, you put some in your nose and you're spraying it. Come on common sense. Okay. So now other things, if you don't go that route, then here we go that you have antihistamines and those can, you can have antihistamine sprays or you can have also the pills, Zyrtec, Claritin, and there's some new ones out. Now remember, and, and Katie's an internist, I believe her family, uh, and some other docs are on and y'all can chime in, but you can see tolerance build up to antihistamine. So if you've been taking Claritin 50,000 years and you notice it's not working as well, it's okay to ship uh, to um, change out and try something different. Make sure that you talk to your doctor and be very careful with antihistamines, especially if you have high blood pressure. Um, they are liquid, they're pills, they're nasal sprays, all of that. Antihistamines will help with hives, rashes, itching, all that. Some make you sleepy, so don't take them if you need to drive. And, you know, talk to their pharmacist or your physician about non-drowsy antihistamines. And then you have uh, phenylephrine and other decongestants to really um, do just that D, take away congestion. And that, if your symptoms are such as you're congested and all of that, uh, you're going to need a decongestant and you can get a combo. Now, you don't need to take decongestants if you have high blood pressure or heart problems or thyroid problems, diabetes or prostate problems. Y'all got that? Don't take decongestants unless your doctor says yes. If you have high blood pressure, heart problems, thyroid disease, diabetes, prostate problems, um, again, unless your doctor says so. Did y'all know that? Okay. Um, most people won't have side effects. Okay, but if you do, it will be a headache, trouble sleeping, and feel, feeling irritable. I talked about allergy shots. I'm not going to go into that. Um, there are some allergy tablets that dissolve, some that you can take orally and all of that. Um, you can also get prescription versus over-the-counter, but either way, you need to talk to your physician's off, uh, office. Um, and then what happens with allergy pills? Usually it's itching. 
um, mouth and stomach problems. Any pill can have possible stomach problems. And if you have severe allergies, and I've talked about this before, one of my good friends is an ER physician. What's up, Fred? Uh, ER physician, he's not even on Facebook, but known him for 30 years. Um, he, if he goes to the beach, he has to have an EpiPen before he goes to the beach just to smell seafood coming off the water. He has a problem. Um, and it is a bad, life-threatening allergy for him. He always, in his office, in his car, on his person, he always has epinephrine pens. And you need to make sure, particularly if you have children with allergies or asthma, and you've had a very bad reaction, you need to talk about getting an epinephrine pen. Um, so how do you reduce the risk of medications? As I said, um, any medication, anything you take can have a side effect. So you want to limit uh, having to use the medications uh, and then list all of your meds out, talk to your doctor and all that. Hi, Mrs. Rogers, one of my teachers from A.L. Brown High School. Um, and talk to them about your past problems. Other things with allergies, if you're taking decongestions and antihistamines and they can all call drowsiness, cause drowsiness and all that, limit your alcohol. Why would you take alcohol, antihistamines, and decongestant? And then you actually, if you're taking antihistamines, should not drink alcohol at all. Uh, and they, it may make you sick. So finally, I told y'all this is going to be quick. We're talking about allergies, and I'm going to talk about the sex boycott that they're talking about. Okay, so other alternatives. Acupuncture has been uh, shown to help people with mild hay fever, basically. Um, and so that would be something that they, to think about as an alternative. Herbal supplements. Hmm, people are taking bee pollen and golden seal and all that to try to help with allergies. Golden seal, I've heard some good things about. But again, sometimes you are allergic to the herbal product that you're taking has a supplement to help with your allergies. And they got pollen on it. Okay, I'm just saying. Nasal irrigation. I actually am not a fan of neti potty because there have been cases where you have basically, people have used neti potty and fungus has grown in the brain and they die. So you have to make sure that if you do that, that you use distilled or sterile water, boil it, and cool tap water. But I have to tell you, I am not a fan at all of neti potty. And then for children, make sure that you actually take them, them to the doctor because when you start doing over-the-counter stuff based on their weight, based on their other things, um, you don't want to necessarily just have uh, you experimenting on your kid with some allergies. Um, so other types of manifestations of allergies, eczema is an allergy. Eczema is an allergy. Contact dermatitis is an allergy. You can have medication allergies and all that. I'm focusing on pollen today. Insect, mosquito bites. Many people, and I actually have a bit of a reaction to a mosquito bite. So what does that mean? If you're allergic to mosquito bites and you put on a repellent before in mosquito season, right? Uh, and then food allergies. The best way to determine a food allergy is if you notice, and I tell this story all the time about my brother Rod. Uh, Mrs. Rogers, you know my brother Rod. Um, so uh, Rod came to my house. And it's Rod, a guy, comedy, attorney by day, comedian by night. Check him out. Uh, he came to my house, and he's a little funny, but I'm going to tell you, he's won major malpractice cases, but hates medicine and really knows nothing about medicine. He's horrible. He's a lawyer. He's horrible. Anyway, so he was like, you know, sis, I got a little scratchy throat. I don't know what happened. And I said, okay, we go through the thing. And he said, and I got it again when I got up the next day. I said, okay. What did, you, what did you do? And so we went through, and I said, well, what did you eat? And he said, I had some shrimp with pasta and whatever. I said, mm-hmm. I said, okay. Uh, and your throat got a little, um, uh, yeah, uh, your throat got a little congested, and, and you got itchy on the throat. He said, yeah, I got really itchy. I said, yeah, you're allergic to shrimp. Uh -uh, I've been eating shrimp all my life, whatever. I said, the next morning when you had the same reaction, did you eat a couple of the shrimp with breakfast? He was like, yes. I said, mm-hmm. Boo -boo. you probably have a shrimp allergy so anyway 
he did it one more time. And, uh, and then he really had a reaction. His throat felt like it was closing up. And he said, you know what? I think I have a shrimp allergy. So when I get mad at him and he comes to my house, what I tell him is that I'm going to cook some shrimp for him uh, and not tell him. That's a little mean, but, you know, I'm a sister. I can. I have a question here. Have you heard of elderberries to help with allergies? Yes. That is something that they're touting. The data is not good at all. My thing is if it's not going to hurt you, and you tried and it works for you, okay. But the data is not good on elderberries, okay? So I have talked, all I'm going to talk about food allergies. I do want to do a shout out to Georgia. And I want to preface all this by saying this. Uh, there have been some crazy, and I don't know if Rachel's still on. Rachel, if you're on, please wave. Rachel is an OBGYN. Um, Dr. Villanueva. Now, there's been some crazy stuff, and I had an interview today on this about Georgia and the whole feet of heartbeat foolishness. Let me tell you, I am a Christian for real. And I, you're welcome. I honestly, uh, early on in debate, when I was at A.L. Brown and would do some debates in presidential classrooms, whatever, I was a huge anti-abortion advocate. And I would be the person that would be on the team, the team or, or with the political science people really going at you know, uh, abortion and all that. But let me tell you, uh, number one, no physician wants to do an abortion. Uh, to be very transparent, when I was in medical school, I opted, and, and I'm not an OBGYN, but in medical school, you do everything, right? So I opted and said, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna be part of uh, even learning how to do an abortion, an elective abortion. Um, but I also remember a young couple who had been trying to get pregnant, trying to get pregnant, trying to get pregnant, and she finally was pregnant, and she was six months pregnant. And she was having a miscarriage, and that was one of the worst days in medical school of my life because this family that wanted a baby so bad, I mean so bad, uh, and she actually opted to deliver a baby, although she knew it was dead. That is horrible. It's a horrible experience. Uh, I've never lived through it. I've witnessed it, but I've never lived through it. And so when we now talk about all of these laws about women and their bodies and abortion, and, and I will say this and I, I will be controversial. I, I am a fundamental Christian in a lot of ways. I do believe that life begins when the egg and the sperm meet. I do. But, and somebody say, but. If that baby cannot live outside of the womb, that fetus, that embryo cannot live outside the womb, I cannot force a woman to carry a child that she has decided in her own religious beliefs, in her own moral beliefs, in her own circumstantial beliefs that she would not. And we've gotten foolish with this. And, and then again, let's go back to rape victims. That's a great question, Tammy Diggs. What happens if a woman is raped? And there have been some politicians that said, you know, there are plenty of children that are positive results of rape. You decide, though, when we now come up with rules and laws about what these very personal decisions are, we now are getting into an area that I believe has a Christian that God doesn't want us in. I do. And it's so funny to me that we, and, and I'm going to get some people mad, but I, you know, I don't care. So let's just go with the basics. If it's a woman's life in danger, the rule for OBGYN is you save the woman, the mother. Because the mother is living, she's right in front of you, you know that you need to save the mother. That's the fundamental rule. I wish my friend Rachel was still on. It's the fundamental rule of OBGYN. Oh, there you go. Let them tell me what to do with my uterus when I regulate their guns. Go ahead, Dr. Villanueva. Villanueva, Dr. Villanueva is literally just a, a wonderful policy person, wonderful OBGYN, one of my best, best friends, uh, and an OBGYN. But we want to talk about children and abortion is now rearing its head. I think that that is a discussion between your physician, your family, your God, if you are, are, are a believer, because you may not be a believer. And you may not believe that life begins at conception. You don't have to. It's okay. Right? But now when we put all these religious holes on now, then you got the same fools up here talking about, uh, and I do mean fool. 
that is the most powerful person in the world talking about doctors and their patients will kill a baby at nine months or eight months. That is an insult to the profession of medicine. That does not ever happen. Nobody delivers a baby and said, okay, that baby's not cute. Let's kill it. That's murder, right? And so most docs, most OBGYNs are so passionate about saving babies about, that's right, Rach, did you hear what he said? About saving babies, saving the mother's life. Now, this is what gets me. Men masturbate all the time, spill all the sperm. Okay, so technically, if it connected with an egg, you could have had a baby. So let's rule, let's say y'all can't masturbate no more. I mean, you want to dictate what we do with our bodies? What about we start dictating what men do with their bodies? And so I've really gotten really in and got asked about this on an interview. Uh, first of all, no physician just says, let's go kill a baby. I don't believe that most women just decide to have unprotected sex. And okay, well, if I get pregnant, all of a sudden I'm going to just have an abortion. It is a grueling decision. And so we have now gotten into the point that now if there's a fetal heartbeat, that that now is going to limit the right for a woman to choose what to do with her body. Can we now, hi Keith, can we now, when men can have babies, I'm sorry, when y'all can carry a baby, then you can tell us what to do with our bodies. That's my that's my feeling for real. Because again, y'all don't have periods. Right? Hey babe, say Keith. Yeah, and and I'm just saying. Now, do men have rights as fathers? Yes, you do. And do you want to have a say as as to whether your wife or your girlfriend or your sexual partner that gets pregnant with your child is able to uh and she wants an abortion and you don't? Okay. Then you all go to the court system. But now this whole foolishness, see, that's, that's out to the rape victims, all of that. There are places that uh, really we have gotten ridiculous with. So a father rapes his daughter, impregnates the daughter, and now a daughter who seeks to get a termination of a pregnancy can't do that. And all life is precious. We spend many more dollars in this country keeping lives living than we do in aborting. And then, so I'm not even going to get on my soapbox about Planned Parenthood and all that other stuff, because again, and I started this by saying, being very transparent, I'm a Christian, a fundamental Christian. I believe uh, in the supernatural power of God. I believe in the supernatural healing. I believe that it's a personal relationship, but a woman in the first month, and the other part, and Dr. Villanueva is on, who's an OBGYN. Hi, Bishop C. Wright. Uh, it, it comes down to now. How far are we going to go? So you want the woman to die and carry a three-month fetus embryo baby. Um, and we've kept people on life support to keep a baby alive. When, have we lost our mind? At the, at the beginning of a fetal heartbeat, that baby cannot live outside the womb. And who am I to dictate what someone else does with their body? If that's the case, this is what we need to do. More than abortions, because you know what kills more than abortions? You know what terminates life more than abortions? Smoking. Okay. So that means if you smoke, the United States government should be able to say, well, we can end your life because you smoke. You see how stupid that sounds? I mean, it's stupid, right? And so now you're going to dictate what a woman does. So now, on the flip side, so I say all this to say this because I got asked about it in an interview that, but then I got asked about the whole sex boycott that people are calling for. Now, y'all could be stupid if you want to. You could be stupid if... I'm just saying, this is Dr. Sharon with the relationship hat on. Uh, so now, many women are calling for a sex boycott in Georgia. So stop sleeping with your man, your husband. Your man, stop sleeping with him until this law's overturned. But he's not a legislator. Uh-huh. I'm just saying, y'all better know what's real. Y'all know I do a whole sex talk and all that, right? Uh, don't mess around and let some fool of this, this, this come in and mess up your group. I'm just saying, go pick it. 
Go do what you want to, but take care of business at your home with your man, with your husband, whatever. I'm just saying. Right, Bishop Foster? Am I talking right? Bishop C. Right? I'm talking right. The Bible, the Bible says I do a whole talk for Christian women. Drop it like it's hot and keep your man. Y'all need to check that out. But don't now. They call it for a national boycott now. Do you know good and well? Y'all try that foolishness if you want to. And uh, what, what you want, okay, don't invite no foolishness. So y'all just ask him to go pick it with you and ask him, uh, ask him to uh, go pick it with you and to sign some petitions, call your legislators, and then go on and make your husband, make love to your husband afterwards. He'll really go pick it for you then. But don't put, I mean, I, I'm just saying, that's crazy talk, right? Dr. Villa the Waver, see the OBG way said, that's crazy. And Tammy, yes, where you want, then that gives somebody license to do whatever. That's like you saying, well, I really don't agree with this, this, and this. And so your man says, I don't have to work because I don't agree, so I'm going to strike at work. Now, you know, most women be like, what? Are you taking your butt to work? What? And you better know who a man and a woman is. Or what if your man says, okay, let's strike. I'm going to strike. I'm not going to have sex with you until this is over. Now, you know, we would be insulted, right? So, don't do no foolishness. That's all Dr. Sharon got to say. So, I said this, you know, I had my little smart hat on my little, my little interview today. And then I just said, I'm sorry, I can't even play. I'm Yeah, y'all done read the bio. I got to go. Okay. Uh, but let me just break this down. We will see a spike in infidelity. <laughs> We, we will see a spike. And then, then you got to get a man a reason to tell you why he's cheating, but wanted to cheat. Well, honey, you know, I had to do it because, you know, you weren't doing whatever, but it was just a little head. It was just a little whatever. What, you better take care of your business and write your congressman, all that. But I, I ended on a high note. But actually, it is a national movement now to have people strike. Because you disagree with the stupid foolishness in Georgia. And I'll end it on that. I do believe that all of us, men, women, boys, and girls, need to stand up. And I do believe that the Supreme Court is going to knock this down, I pray. Uh, it is a woman's right. We've already decided this, but this is for political gain. Now, I do believe if you're married to a legislator in Georgia that voted for this, yes, you need to strike. And actually, your stupid butt shouldn't be married to somebody crazy. Uh, Melania, you need to strike. But I think you probably struck a long time ago. All right? So, happy endings will grow. Yes, that's right, Tammy. Didn't you? people have to be at the massage parlor with a happy ending like the little man from the Patriots? I'm just saying. So, this is Dr. Sharon. I've got to go work out. If you didn't see the top part of this... We talked about allergies. That was key. I added in the issue about Georgia and the fetal heart bed beat law and I did it from a place of and I have two bishops that have been on I've seen you come up thank you for watching uh, I did it from a place of love and a place nobody wants to have an abortion no woman wakes up and says I just want to have an abortion I, 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 I nobody does that and and has Bishop uh, Andrea Foster said it leads to long term I've seen women who long term have guilt and depression and and all that hi robin uh, around having had to make the decision of abortion or you have had miscarriages and all of that it is so personal why do we now feel like that the first time that we get to talk about and and this is what kills me and this is all i'm gonna say about it what kills me is that we will dog out and try to protect children with abortions and say, well, that's a, your embryo, the fetus, your whatever. Okay. But we will let people get AK-47s and assault weapons and go into schools and kill our children. One of the worst things, and I literally cried when I saw little children coming out of the school with their hands up. Come on. We can't have gun legislation, but we can legislate that a woman... At the sign of a fetal heartbeat, you can't have an abortion. Have we lost our mind for political gain? Because you know good and well it's, it's not going to stand. Have we lost our mind? The same person that's signing that actually tried to steal an election in Georgia, I'm just saying. Right? But the, at the same time, there are thousands of people in jail with extended sentences. 
um, that may be murdered, that may be executed, but we don't necessarily want to protect that life. We have children going to bed hungry every day in this country, right? We don't want to protect that. We have migrant children dying under our care at the border, but we don't want to protect that. And so that's the po politics of it all. And, and I, I just am getting ready to get off, but do share this, um, watch it again. I did talk about allergies, how to prevent, how all of that, and then talked about um, really the very sensitive issue of abortion, how to navigate even the political waters of abortion, uh, and the long-term effects, and to really just cut the head of the snake off with the foolishness that your president said about, oh, doctors and patient women just decide they're going to kill a baby after they delivered a full-term baby. You're an idiot. That's stupid. And that's inflammatory. And that's an insult to the millions of women who have had to make the very hard decision or had it made for them, they've had miscarriages or made the very hard decision to terminate a pregnancy. And I've never seen a woman ever go in and decide to have an abortion and be happy-go-lucky about it. I've never. I don't know if Dr. Villanueva, you have as an OBGYN. I've never seen that. I've never, my friends that are in the field have never seen that. And often you see doctors and their patients crying because you terminate this pregnancy because you're trying to keep the mother alive. And we've also seen the reverse. We've seen mothers so tied to what society says and murder of a child and all of that, that they risk their life and actually die. And the baby dies too. So I am going to do something for my health, go work out. But I wanted to share and I wanted to. And, and Dr. Villanueva says never, never has she seen a woman happy-go-lucky about uh, an abortion. And so right to Georgia, we, we can't have this going. Women are once again being attacked and minimized because no one is saying what men do with their bodies, right? And then the final part, and it's a little funny, but it is a national movement. Y'all don't do that foolishness about saying no to sex to your husband, your man, whatever, until this law gets overturned. I mean, I'm just saying, don't invite <laughs> Don't invite foolishness into your household. I'm just saying. Because, you know, you better know who a man is and know who a woman is. Right? And you have needs. And sex is good for you because it brings up endorphins and, and all of that. And go work out. All right? But don't do that. Don't, don't, wives, do not now cut off your husband because you're on a political issue. I don't even think that's biblical. But even if you don't know God, no common sense. All right? That's it. Have a good day. Do something for your health today, and hopefully you learned something. Did y'all learn something? All right. Bye-bye.